So right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're given 58 degrees, B equals 12.8, and A equals 11.4. All right, so let's go and draw the triangle like we would any other time. So I could say here's A, which is at 58 degrees. All right, here's C, and we'll call this one B. C, we don't know any information for. B, we know this is 12.8, and A, we know is 11.4, right? So automatically, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that I have side-side angle, all right? When you have side-side angle, rather than just following your daily tasks that you do every single day, I kind of want your ears to perk up and say, all right, now is a possibility that I have two cases, all right? Because what we need to be able to do is there's a possibility now that I could have multiple triangles. All right, and here's, what, here's the case, the reason why. This isn't really a great um, triangle. I could actually even shorten this up. But what, I could, uh, what I'm trying to show you guys is you could have a triangle that looks like this. right? Couldn't you also just draw the same triangle if you kind of use this as a hinge and it went right there? Because right? we don't know what angle C is. Right? So my angle, 11.4, could be here or probably a little bit. Or we could say 11.4 is here. You guys see how that's a possibility? Because we don't know what C is right now. All we know is what these two side lengths are. And yes, I know my triangle isn't written because this side is much longer than this side and it's shorter, but we'll just get through that. But you guys see how I could have two possibilities? Yes? That's like me hinging, like that's pretending me like I took this as like a hinge on a door and I like I rotated it down to here. Oh. Okay, so it's kind of like the pathway of that side. So you guys can see there's actually two triangles. I could have an obtuse, I could have a triangle with an obtuse C, or I could have a triangle with an acute C. Right? So there is a possibility. So it's not as it's not as basic as just, hey, give me money, take it back, you know, the stuff that we were talking about before. So there's a possibility of two different triangles. There's also a possibility. What if 11.4 looked like that? And let's say, you know, here's this side length. Is it a possibility that these could not even touch? It is. Let's say if 11.4 is that long, and then we end up finding C, because we don't know what the length of C is. What if C is short? All right, we'll get through that case. Right now, um, let's just go and take a look at C. I want you guys to understand there's a possibility of either two triangles, one triangle, or no triangles. And this is always going to happen when we look at our side side angle. So how does that work? Because Mr. McGowan, what you just told us to do is just find side side angle and so forth, or define your missing angles. Well, let's take a look at it. So we have a ratio, right? We have A over A, and we have a side length B. So let's create the law of sines. So we have 11.4 over the sine of 58 degrees equals 12.8 over the sine of B. So we do our same thing. We do our cross multiplication. And we could say that sine of b is equal to 12.8 times the sine of 58 degrees all over 11.4. I'm solving for b. So I, multi I cross multiplied, and then I divided by 11.4. So I can do 12.8 times the sine of 58 and then divide it by 11.4. So I could say the sine of b is equal to 0.9522. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, does that make sense for that to be an angle? Right. You got to take the inverse sine, correct? Right? So you take the inverse sine of your second answer. And you get 72.21 degrees. So we say B equals sine inverse of 0.9522. And we could say B equals 72.21 degrees. OK. So here's where it's going to get a little dicey. So let's go back to the unit circle. All right. What I did is I just found the inverse. Right? I apply the inverse. And the important thing for you guys to understand about the inverse is if I'm going to look at, let's say I have a sine value. Let's look at the sine value of 1 half. If I say the sine of b equals 1 half, 
Is there one answer or two answers to that? There's two answers. Because what is, what is, is sine equal to 1 half at pi over 6? Yeah, of course it is. And it's also equal over here, right? So if I was going to say sine inverse b of 1 half, we could say b equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, right? Because your sign is positive in the first and second quadrant. So therefore, there's two actual answers. We could say here it's pi over 6, which is your reference angle. Notice these are your reference angles. But this angle right here is 5 pi over 6, right? So does everyone understand when I'm taking the inverse of my sign, um, my domain, I'm going to have two values that are in the first and second quadrant. I have that, I have my original angle, and also using it as a reference angle. So what I want you guys to understand is, if I'm going to look at 72 degrees, where my marker top go? So if I'm looking at 72 degrees, and I say, if I say the inverse of 0.95222 is giving me 72 degrees, which is right here, do you think I'm going to have another angle that's going to have that exact same sign value? Yeah, I'm going to have the one over here. Right? So what would that angle be? How, how could you, we know this angle is 72.21. How can I figure out what that angle is? Close. Not exactly 90, but if we take 180 minus that, We'll get what this ang we'll get that we'll get the remaining angle. Okay, so let's go and take. Um, so let's go and take 180 minus our angle 72.21, and what that gives us is B is gonna could also equal 107.79. It's okay. We're not done yet. Yes. What do you mean? Like the last green line on the quadrant. This one? Two, what about that one to the same axis? Here? Yes. No, this from here to here is 72.21 degrees. Oh, okay. So we want to find what that angle is. So we're taking 180, minusing this, and that's going to give us that angle. We're, I'm not done explaining. I'm still going to kind of go through it. Do you kind of understand, though, how there's two different angles that have the same sine value? OK. Do you understand here how these both have the same sine value? 1 half and 1 half, right? So same thing with this. If I give you one angle, you know there's an opposite one that has the same sine value, right? These two angles, are going to, I don't know what their coordinates are, but they're going to have the same sine value, right? So if you find one, you've got to make sure you check with the other one because there's going to be two in the first and second quadrant, OK? So you've got to check two angles. We're going to go through now, do, do, both of these triangle, do both of these angles work? So that's what we do is we say we create case one and case two. So right now we have b equals 107 degrees. So we could say b equals 107.79 degrees. Or we also said that b could equal 72.21 degrees. So there's a possibility now of there being two different c values. And let's go and see if these work. OK. So what we do is we write case 1. Case 2. So case 1 says that, um, let's do this as case 1, and this will be case 2. So case 1 says this is 72.21 degrees. That's an acute angle, right? So we could say that's going to look something like this, 58 degrees. Um, that's going to be something like this. So this would be 72.21. and. There you go. And this is, oh, wait. Did I get them to be the same? Oh, did I, I wrote it in there, didn't I? OK. Yeah, we said that could be 72.21. Or we could look at case two, which says it's going to, I wrote in case number one. We don't know. That, that's one example, right? Yeah. We don't. We don't actually know what this angle is right now. I wrote in what B was, and I wrote in what A. 
OK, we don't know what C is, though, right? Now, Mackenzie, let's go and take a look at this one. So if I say now um, B is equal to 102 degrees. So I still have 58 degrees. What you guys need to understand is, do you, do you understand when I was taking, well, first of all, we have side, side, angle. Do you know in the other ones, I wasn't using the inverse sign, right? When you, yeah. when you complete the inverse sign, that's what's giving you your two options, right? Because you have, when you complete the inverse sign, you know that you have to be able to find both values. That's why I, that's why I drew up the unit circle. When you apply the inverse sign, you have to understand that there's going to be two possibilities in that first and second quadrant. Right? That's why we come up with this case. So, what did I find? A, A, B. So we said B could equal 107 degrees. All right. So now, what I want to do is I want to see do, do either of these both work? I know, it, it's not work. So let's go and take a look at case one. Does case one, does this work? If I'm given A and B, can I figure out what C is? So 180 minus 58 degrees, right? We are, we're given 58 degrees from the beginning. And then minus our new angle, 72.21. Is that going to give us our new value equal to C? So what will now angle C equal? Right? Because on my case one, I figured out what B was. Now, now I can figure out what C was. So we do 180 minus 58 minus 72.21. And that gives me, yeah, hey, C is going to be 49.79 degrees. Um, OK. Oh, it's just 70.21? OK, let me go and change it then. 180 minus 58 minus, oh, I did it right. I don't know why I wrote that in there. All right, so now that's for case one. What about if case two? What if we said now, hey, this is going to be 107 degrees. This is 58 degrees. Is it still possible to create this second triangle? So what I do for this C is I do 180 minus 58 degrees minus 107 0.79 degrees equals C. So we do 180, 180 minus 58 minus 107.79. And guess what? I get 14.21. So I could say 14.21 degrees equals C. And I know my triangle is kind of looking a little crazy, guys, but it would probably just be something like that. All right? So we could say this angle is 14.21. So do you guys see how I can create kind of two different triangles? Here's where it's obtuse. Here's where it's acute. But there's two possibilities, and I can still remain. The, I can still create the same. So we know A is 11.4. B is 12.8. So the last um, remaining value is we need to figure out what our C is. So we're going to use a law of signs for each value to find our value C. So for this one, I don't know, I'll use uh, A. So I'll do 11.4 over the sine of 58 equals um, C over the sine of 49.79. That's for case one. For case two, I'll do the same thing. 11.4 over the sine of 58 degrees equals C over the sine of 14.21. All right, and then I'll cross multiply and divide. I'm just going to kind of do this to speed this along. So my last one uh, for case one, I'll do 11.4 times the sine of 49.79. And then I'll divide that by the sine of 58. And I get C equals 10.26. For this case, I'm going to do 11.4 times the sine of 14.21, and then divide that by the sine of 58 degrees. 
And here I get C is going to equal 3.29. So ladies and gentlemen, the main important thing you guys need to take from this, all right? I know it's a lot of extra work you're looking at. You just need to take from this. When you're given side side angle and you have to, you have to apply the inverse sign, there's two opportunities. You could have an obtuse or you could have an acute triangle. You need to make sure you look into both of them. Next, what we're going to do is look into what if there's no triangle at all, all right? And that'll be pretty simple that you guys will be able to see, okay? So this is your example. Yes? I'll go over, I'll show you on number five what exactly to do. Just want you guys to understand, get this. So I'll, I'll explain number five here in a second. I don't understand what.